Amen. And I caught the last part of the uh, Bible study, uh, and it was awesome. Just, just God continued to speak and continue to give me confirmation. And this is a message I've been hearing all week, WFIL, on TV, on the internet. Um, see, the world, the world doesn't care how they view us because it's the world, unbelievers, the enemy. He don't have a problem making a mockery of what we believe, Jesus and our faith. And what God has he's spoken to me is, we as believers need to shine that light and if we say we're believers, we need to walk in that because we don't want to give the enemy fuel. Amen. So the messages I've been hearing have been, it's time out for all that. Yes. So if we're going to serve him, let's serve him in the name of Jesus. Yes. So the, the title of this message is, Are the Lights On? And all through our scripture, emphasis on light is significant in the New and the Old Testament. And I took two accounts in the Old Testament about God. In Genesis 1, it says, darkness covered the face of the earth, and God said, let there be light. And there was light. And our Creator God said that that light was good. And also in Exodus 13, 21, God appeared as a pillar of fire by night to lead them and guide them as they traveled by night when they um, came out of Egypt in their exodus. So I just want to encourage, just like God said in his word in John 3, 16, he, he so loved the world that he sent his only begotten son, that whosoever shall believe it in him shall not perish, but have everlasting life. So the creator God, he looked past our wickedness, our sin, the evil in this world, and he saw our desperate need for him. And in, the, in seeing our desperate need for him, he introduced us, wretched people, to the light of salvation, which is Jesus Christ our Lord. And we know in light there's visibility and illumination. We know that when we're in the dark, whether it's a, uh, uh, the power goes out, or PSE and G says a no, you have to put money on that bill, and, you know, get your lights back on. Whatever the reason, when we're in the dark, in the natural, what we do is grab for some type of artificial light, whether it's a flashlight, a, 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 a candle, because we don't want to sit in the dark. <sighs> Who wants to sit in the dark when you're aware that you're in the dark? Not me, the only time I want to be in the dark is when I'm asleep. Because you know, I'm asleep and it doesn't really matter. But Jesus came to expose and repel spiritual darkness in me. Because this world is covered in spiritual darkness. And I don't have to tell anybody in here about the times we live in, the state of the world, with the murders, the rapes, you know, drugs, all these things that are going on in this world. If there ever was a time to pray, now's the time. If, if you're a believer that truly trusts in the Lord, it's time to pray. It's time to get on our knees. Amen. Amen. I thank the Lord that he still saves. His blood never loses his power. It was powerful then over 2,000 years ago when he shed it, and it is powerful now. And I thank God for that. In Matthew, Jesus began his ministry in Matthew 5. And he gave the Sermon on the Mount. And as he was giving the Sermon on the Mount, he was doing nothing more than teaching, instructing, and affirming the disciples. And anybody who follows Christ Jesus, this is the standard by which we live, the Word of God. If we say we are a believer and we believe the word of God, then that has to show in our walk. Uh, uh, experts say that maybe 50 to 70 percent of our communication is nonverbal. So that means action speaks louder than words. So the question is for the body of Christ, what do people see when they see you? What does your Christian walk communicate to the world? 
That's, that's the question that's been in my head as God was preparing this message. And it's just to encourage the body of Christ. We got work to do. Because maybe it's not us, but maybe somebody's struggling with fear in sharing their faith. That's why I praise God for the carols. After the video and then the little cards and, and all those things, God is trying to encourage the body of Christ. You got to share your faith with a lost and dying world. Because it's lost and dying and they need an example. They need someone to look to. Because I don't care what anybody says or what it looks like, there are some that will reject the gospel. They don't want it. But I believe it, there are people out there whose souls are crying out for an example. They're crying out. They know enough about the world and what the world has in it. They know enough about sin. But they're just looking for that glimmer of light. <coughs> so we got work to do. In the name of Jesus. The same way the moon has no light of its own, but it reflects the light of the sun. That's what we believers are. Christ is the light of the world. What we are here, he's sitting at the right hand of the Father. We're remnants. So we're reflections of who Christ is and was. So for the believer, we must walk under the, under the authority of Christ and be led by the Holy Spirit. We must reflect the nature and character of Christ, and that's his love, his compassion, and his forgiveness. There are some that profess the name of Christ, but they are not walking in his love, his compassion, or forgiveness. And if you're struggling with that, I know a God that if you call on the name of Jesus and ask him to forgive you, confess it. He is faithful and just to forgive us and cleanse us from all unrighteousness. That's the God we serve. Amen. Amen. Whether it's laziness, you don't share your faith. Whether it be laziness, because some people go through that. I, early in my walk, I did. I didn't feel like doing it. But as I continue to grow in my faith, he's worthy, no matter what it is. He's going to ask us to do things that's going to totally take us out of our comfort zone. Is he worthy to you? You never know who could be sitting in here. You don't know him. But yet their soul is crying out. I need truth. We need to walk in truth. In the light. So we're reflections. What the sun is to the natural world, you know, warmth, life, uh, light, mm -hmm. is what the sun is to the believer in the spiritual. He grows us spiritually. He's our life. Not just eternal, but abundant. That's who Christ is to us. And that needs to be made known to the world. John 13, 34 and 35 says, A new command I give you, love one another as I have loved you. So you must love one another. By this all men will know that you are my disciples if you love one another. Colossians 3, 12 says, Therefore as God's chosen people, holy and dearly loved, clothe yourselves with compassion, kindness, humility, gentleness and patience. Verse 13 says, bear with each other and forgive whatever grievances you may have <coughs> against one another. Forgive as the Lord forgave you. The only way a believer can do that is they stay connected to that source of light. Our source of light is Jesus. We have to stay connected to him. Because there's no way I'm going to be able to witness someone if I'm not on my knees praying and interceding for people or even reading my word. Or even... Uh, walking in the spirit. There's no way I can do it. And I think that's the encouragement I want to give the body of Christ. Because there may be some that don't even open their word until they get in here on Sunday morning. We want you youth, the, the few that's in here, to be so grounded in Christ that you know without a shadow of a doubt that that plan he has for you is for you. We want you to know that even in your young age, you can shine that light for Christ. It doesn't matter if you're the only saved person in your classroom. Even the feeblest and smallest light makes a difference in darkness. It does. You may not think that you're so learned in the Word. I don't know everything in here, and I may never know everything in here. But I know Jesus saves. And I know he died on that cross for my sins. That's all you have to communicate. Not just with words, but with your actions. 
If I'm telling my friends I'm a Christian and I praise this and I go to church on Sundays, but yet they see me at the club cursing on Facebook, doing all kinds of things that are contrary to what I say, they're not going to want what you have. If I told you I have a doctor who's really, really, he's a great doctor, but I'm dying under his care, I think you would be reluctant to oh, make right. him your Sign doctor, up. right? Yeah, exactly. <laughs> so we have to stay connected to that source of life. John 15, Jesus speaks about the true vine and what happens to the branches when they fall off. They wither away. So you need the word in your life. You need to pray and you need to walk in the power of the Holy Spirit. The church needs to recognize that they need to walk in the authority of Christ because he's given us that authority. And I can't just shine my light in the church. It's not just for here. There's a world out there that needs to hear it. What good is it if it's a bright, beautiful, sunny day out there and I take a flashlight and turn it on out there? What impact would that make? But in darkness, I'm telling you, that light is welcomed. It's welcomed. So what do they see when they see you? What does your walk communicate? Why should we reflect Jesus and in, in his character and his nature? Because as a believer, your life is on display. All the time. Amen. God's light was not meant to be concealed. Where light is not manifested in the believer, we make no witness. We betray God's trust. It injures our witness and it makes us ineffective. And the sad thing about that is, I, before I go into that, I was blessed when Reverend McNair preached last Sunday. Mm -hmm. And he blessed me because he said he felt at home and he felt loved. Mm -hmm. And that says a lot about you. And, and, and I'm telling you, the presence of God. Because I know when I first came, all I felt was love. Even though I was looking at y'all like y'all crazy, probably. <laughs> and then I'm thinking to myself, they can't be like that all the time. It just, no. Mm -hmm. Even when I'm, you know, meeting uh, my mother-in-law, first lady, I said, mm, she can't be like that uh, all the time. Yeah, okay. yes, she is. yes, she is. Yes, she is. Yes, she is. And I praise the name Never of the Lord Amen. that I am blessed with wonderful in-laws. Thank yes. you, Jesus. Amen. As believers, we don't want to present the gospel. See, people in the world are watching you closer than you could ever imagine. They, they are really watching it. And they don't have a problem making a mockery. And then the minute you slip up, they want to point the finger and say, see, you're a hypocrite. That's what the world does. So again, we don't want to give them fuel to point a finger. We want to give God glory because that's who gets the glory because he shares it with no one. We have no glory apart from God. The same way the moon has no light, it reflects the sun. We have nothing apart from him. And just like in John 15, he said in, in verse 5, without me, you can do nothing. So it's not us, it's Christ. So we don't want to present the gospel in a way that will cause unbelievers to think that faith in Jesus requires no change at all. Because that is a lie straight from the pit. Because 2 Corinthians 5.17 tells us that if any man be in Christ, he's a new creature. Old is passed away, behold, all things become new. So I have to live my life for Christ. I can't live it for the world. I'm not called to go with the flow. I'm not called to, to, to just condone what people do because if I don't speak out, that's just as well as condoning. You can shine your light, and I'm speaking to the youth because we know how hard it is for y'all right now. It's not like when I was growing up. It's more wicked. The enemy is really relentless at taking our youth and taking them straight to hell. So when we shine that light, it's not just here, it's in your home. And that's what convicted me. You have to shine that light in your home. Because if you're the only one saved in your home, how are they going to know? How are they going to know? We can't get crushed and, and weighed down by the cares of this world because we have to keep our focus on Christ. That's why we have to stay connected to Christ. 
He's the source of that light. He's placed that light in us. We reflect it. People see it, and they're drawn to it. Just like moths to a flame. I mean, I have, in my backyard, I have a little light right here. When I open the door, it, it, the light is off. You don't see no moth. Mm -hmm. Soon as I turn that light on, they're okay. flying in the house and, you know, everywhere. They're just drawn to it. It's not you. It's the Christ in you that they're drawn to. So, just like Jesus warned in, in chapter 6, we don't toot our own horns or blow a trumpet like the hypocrites do because we don't do nothing. Let's just establish that now. There's nothing we do. Nothing. That is why it is our reasonable service to present our bodies a living sacrifice, holy and acceptable unto God, which is our reasonable service. We're no longer conformed to this world, but we're transformed by the renewing of our minds. How does our minds get transformed? By the Word, by the Holy Spirit, by Christ in us. I'm still in awe that Christ chose to dwell in me, to live inside of me. Because I heard somebody in um, WFIL say, I could build the most elaborate and beautiful tabernacle church, whatever, but Christ would still choose to dwell in his people. Mm -hmm. Because that's how much we mean to him. So if I'm going to say I'm a believer and I'm going to live for Christ, I better be about it. And I know sometimes we miss the mark and we, we kind of, but that's why we have a God that says 1 John 1, 9. That's for the believer. One, you gotta love them with all your heart, mind, soul, and strength. You gotta love them. We are the light of Christ and we must walk in truth. First John 1 6 says, if we claim to have fellowship with him and yet walk in darkness, we lie and do not live out the truth. Now talk about God's word being a hammer. People gotta see it. That's the testimony and the witness that convinces the world that there is a Savior and Jesus is alive. And Jesus still saves. In Ephesians 5, we'll start with verse 11. It says, Ephesians 5, 11, Have nothing to do with the fruitless deeds of darkness, but rather expose them. For it is shameful even to mention what the disobedient do in secret. But everything exposed by the light becomes visible. For it is light that makes everything visible. This is why I said, wake up, O sleeper. Rise from the dead, and Christ will shine on you. His light cannot be overthrown, cannot be covered up. Darkness can't overpower it. So he's placed that light in you. The world needs to see it. If, if enough of us or all of us that say we believe in Christ just did what we were supposed to do, I mean, I'm telling you. You, you talking about revival, because that's, that's what I'm hearing. People say we need revival. Mm -hmm. the, the, the unbeliever needs evangelism. Amen. The believer needs revival. Mm -hmm. One minister put it this way. When I read this article, I was like, boo. He said, it's a sad thing for someone to proclaim Jesus Christ as Lord and Savior and continue to live an openly sinful life. It brings dishonor to Christ and the gospel. It is a stumbling block for unbelievers. It is certainly not effective in convincing anyone that Christ has the power to transform lives. Our responsibility as disciples of Christ is to have lives so transformed. And we know about transformation. Romans 12, 1 and 2, um, um, 2 Corinthians 5, 17, we've been made new. It says, have lives so transformed by the word and the presence of Christ that everyone can see his light reflected in our actions. Yes. So that's what Christ, I mean, if, if he means that much to you, shine that light. Shine that light. We've all sang the song, This Little Light of Mine. I'm going to let it shine. Let it shine. Let it shine. Let it shine in the name of Jesus. Amen. 
God is glorified. Let me go back to Matthew. He said in verse 16, In the same way, let your light shine before men, that they may see your good deeds and praise your Father in heaven. God is glorified when the world sees Galatians 5.22 lived out in the life of the believer. This world is cold, hearts are waxing cold. People don't know. I'm with this storm coming, you watch the news, you see everybody just going straight crazy. I gotta buy water, I gotta buy candles, I gotta buy all these things. And there's nothing wrong with doing those things, but if we trust in Christ, I mean, I, I'm thankful that this message is about light because you may not have any lights in a week. I, I don't know, but God knows. Yes. And, and I trust God. And if we trust God and people see that peace that surpasses all understanding that only can come from Christ Jesus, that's a way to witness. That, that's a life. Amen? Amen? I don't have to be in China to be shining my light in China. I pray for China. I pray for Japan. Mm. When, when people send care packages to the troops out there, that's a form of shining your light. That's right. Because they're fighting a war. I don't agree with it, but you know, that that's... All I know is they need Jesus too. They need his protection. They need to know that peace that surpasses all understanding because something going on out there because they're coming back not right. Not right. Then I hear chaplains aren't allowed to say the name of Jesus or pray in the name of Jesus or I don't know. This is what I'm hearing, reading articles. We are the enemy. The world looks at us like we crazy. You say the name of Jesus, someone they say, mm, yeah. you might want to tone that down. Tone, tone it down. Mm. But if I'm a Muslim, I can wear yeah, the whole, you, you know, oh, if, I, if I'm wearing a cross, <laughs> which Christ ain't on the cross no more. Some people wear it as a statement. Some people, some people take it as straight demonic. Mm. They do. Mm. Um, mocking him dying on the cross. Yep. But we know why we wear it, because it's a symbol. A reminder of what he did for us on that cross. That's right. But if I wear that in public or whatever, it's getting to the point, I'm telling you. A day's going to come where we're not going to be free to worship, carry Bible, whole Bible study, have church, or anything like that. It's the truth. It's coming. Because we are living in the last days. And I can remember a while back, I think Elder Moore said, this is the most exciting time to live, to be a Christian. Young in the faith? I said, are you crazy? You look at the world and the state of the world and the way things look. But man, you read your word, this is an exciting time to be a Christian. This, it really is. Because not only does our redemption draw up near, but we have an opportunity to go out there with the time we have now. Today is the day of salvation. Today we have to go out there and, and, and share the gospel. And preaching, I used to be afraid of that word when I got up here preaching. When I answered the call, and pastor, preaching is just a form of proclaiming Christ, the gospel. See, we can't walk around half saved. That was for you and commission. <laughs> I love you. Anybody who was here at Bible study on Wednesday, they know what I'm talking yeah. about, and we knew what you meant. <laughs> Amen. Amen. That was from Uncle Mitch. Yeah. Nobody's like Uncle That's right. <laughs> Amen. But I just want to encourage the body of Christ. They have to see his love. The world has to see his joy. In the believer, his peace, patience, his kindness, his goodness, his faithfulness, his gentleness, and self-control. And I'm going to close out with this. Jesus saves and he saves to the utmost. This world may be under the influence of the enemy, but we're under the influence of the Holy Spirit of God. And the word tells us in 1 John 4, 4, that greater is he that's in us than he that's in the world. So you can share your faith, no matter what it looks like. 
You can love God with all your heart, mind, soul, and strength, even in the midst of this. But you got to stay connected to the source of that light. So I just want y'all to be encouraged. If this message was not for you, share it with somebody. Share it. Because it was convicting for me because I want to do better for Christ. Because he's worthy of it. Amen? Amen. 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 Am